Hello and welcome back to West Conrec TV. This will be our last video of this intro series and we'll be demonstrating some static stretches to help finish up your workouts. As with the exercises, feel free to choose any of these stretches to integrate into your routine. And do keep in mind that static stretching is going to be uh, less useful at the start of a weight training session. And at that time, you would get more benefit from dynamic movements and warm up exercises. Uh, these stretches that we'll show you today are great for post workout or for uh, stretching outside of the gym on your own time. Let's work our way from the top to the bottom, starting with the upper trapezius. This is a very large muscle that extends down the length of your back, but this stretch will only focus on the upper portion between the scapula and up to the base of the skull. Place one arm behind your back and hold it in place using the other hand. Tilt your head away from the arm that is behind you. In this example, we rotate our necks between positions. However, I would recommend choosing angles to hold rather than continuously rotating to keep some stress off the vertebrae in your neck. Onto our deltoids, the classic across the body stretch. Hold at or around your elbow to keep your arm in close to the torso for a stretch of the medial and posterior deltoids. If this stretch produces any pinching or discomfort in the shoulder, it may help to lower your elbow slightly towards your sternum at the center of your chest. For the anterior deltoid, as well as the pectoralis muscles, place both hands in the center of your lower back. If this position is difficult, try placing your palms on the back of your hips. Push your chest up and forward while holding your elbows back behind your body. This pectoralis focus stretch will utilize the corner of a wall in this example, but you can also use any gym equipment, pillars, or yoga balls. Position the arm so that the corner of the wall meets your upper arm at the deltoid. Take a step forward past the wall and a slight rotation away to effectively push your arm further behind your body. The triceps can be targeted with the overhead tricep stretch by reaching up and behind your back and pulling your arm deeper into position by holding your elbow with your free hand. In this position, tight triceps may make it difficult to keep your scapula or your shoulder blade in place. If this is the case or you're unable to reach up and hold your elbow comfortably, use a wall or other sturdy surface to lean against. By using the wall to push your elbow deeper, your free hand can be used to hold your scapula in place and keep the full stretch focused on the triceps. Here we show a bicep stretch using a yoga ball, which can also be performed on any solid surface. The full forearm is in contact with the ball here, but the important contact is with the thumb and forefinger and the surface you're using. Positioning your arm extended behind and away from your torso places the biceps in a deep stretch. You should feel the stretch across the length of your bicep. If you feel more in the shoulder, you're pushing too hard. Try resetting and flexing your triceps during the stretch rather than rotating further. To stretch the latissimus dorsi and lower trapezius, your arms need to be raised in a position above your head. With no equipment, you can perform this on the floor. Begin in a kneeling position and reach forward until your elbows are on the floor. Sit back into the stretch while keeping your elbows and forearms in contact with the floor. Pushing your hands into the floor can create more tension as you sit back and increase the stretch. Now we'll move on to the lower body. The standing quadriceps stretch is of course very well known. A few tips to mention here. Uh, keep the thigh pointed straight down toward the floor or behind you. When grabbing your foot, hold close to your ankle rather than your toes. This will prevent unnecessary stress on the ankle and allows for a better grip during the stretch. Keep in mind, this is a stretching exercise, not one for balance. It's far more useful to hold a sturdy surface and focus on the stretch rather than worrying about balancing. Let's take it to the floor for the butterfly stretch. Begin sitting down with the bottom of your feet placed together. Hold your feet in close using your hands to stretch the adductor muscles of the inner thigh. Tightening your glutes will help you to further the stretch and you can also use your elbows to put downward pressure on your legs. Remaining in the seated position for the seated hamstring stretch, we'll do one leg at a time here, but you can also do this uh, with both legs forward. For this one, you'll place one leg fully extended, bring your other foot in and place it at or above your knee. Uh, reach with your hands towards the outstretched foot as far as you can go. If you cannot yet reach your foot, begin at the knee and walk your hands down your leg until you can no longer make any progress, then hold at that position. Remember to keep your leg fully extended throughout the stretch by flexing your quadriceps. The abductors, including your glutes, can be stretched by forcing your leg into an overly adducted position. 
Leave one leg fully extended and cross the other foot to the lateral or outer side of your extended knee. From this position, you can turn your torso toward the crossed leg and use your arm to create added pressure for the stretch. Alternatively, you can tuck the tibia, or the bony part of your shin, into your inner elbow, uh, lock hands, and hug your leg toward your body to enhance the stretch further. Most people, including ourselves, have tight iliotibial tracts, otherwise known as the IT band. This is a connective tissue that runs from the ilium in your hip to the tibia in your lower leg, hence the name iliotibial, or IT. This stretch is very similar to the abductor stretch we just showed, uh, with one leg remaining fully extended and the other will cross over. This time, place your foot next to the lateral side of the ankle rather than the knee. This is to prevent your extended leg from moving out of position during the stretch. Unlike the abductor stretch, turn your upper body slightly toward the side of the extended leg. It is important to remember that we're mainly stretching connective tissue here and not muscles, so this doesn't need much force to get the desired effect. You should feel this along the outer side of your extended thigh. If you're experiencing any discomfort or burning sensations, especially below the knee or in the hip, stop immediately. You're likely pushing too hard. Try again some other time. That is going to conclude our flexibility exercises for today's video. As always, if you enjoyed or learned something new or otherwise useful, give us a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. Remember to follow us on Instagram at westcon underscore rec TV. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching and following along in our series. Stay active. We'll see you later.